So you've watched our previous video all about the basics of experimental um, design and, and thinking. Now you actually want to design and experiment properly so that you can get results, uh, analyze them and make a decision for um, your farm or business. So today in this video, we'll be looking at some of the key um, principles in building a um, experiment. That is a randomization, replication, control and standardization of variables. So when we design an experiment, we want to make sure we have all four of these and, and that will make sure that our experiment makes uh, will provide results that are both accurate and reliable. And we'll talk about those um, in a second. But randomization, so this is um, making sure that we're not bringing any bias into our uh, experiment. So making sure that every time we um, select something or any time that we have a say in the experiment itself, it's uh, under a random um, selection process. We'll talk about uh, how that exactly works in a second. Next, we've got replication. Replication is having um, the experiment or the trials repeated multiple times. That way we can get multiple um, data points rather than just saying uh, we're gonna run the experiment once and we're gonna get one, bit, like one result. We're gonna run it 10 times and get 10 results and compare all those results, we'll make an average. Next, we wanna control. Control is really important for um, knowing kind of what a baseline is. It's all good to run an experiment, but if we, if we just have one paddock and we apply the whole paddock with a um, set thing of fertilizer because we wanna know the effect of nitrogen, well, how good is that if we don't know what it is without nitrogen? So we wanna have something to compare our experiment to, and that's our control. And finally, we want standardization of variables. Um, this makes sure that we're um, collecting results based off the effect of our independent variable. Um, we wanna make sure everything that we can think of is equal in our two groups. So what does this actually look like when we're designing an experiment? Well, say uh, we want to um, compare, um, say the vermiculture concentrate that we talked about last video. Our aim would be something like test the effect of um, vermiculture concentrate on the growth of wheat plants. So we're looking at the biomass production. And what we have on hand, so we've got a paddock, this. Now, because of experimental constraints, we've only got one paddock because farmers are letting us use one paddock. So we've got to use this uh, the best way we can. So we've got our paddock. Next, uh, we'll probably write down here, um, dependent, which is um, uh, biomass. Our independent is gonna be um, our treatment. So currently we're thinking we're gonna inoculate the seeds with um, the biocast, and then we're going to uh, seed it in this paddock. So let's have a look at what we need to, uh, to have. We need randomizations. So we need to randomize where our, uh, I guess, groups are um, being grown. We'll come back to that. Replication, so we want lots of different um, data points. So say we've got this paddock. We're gonna divide this paddock up into, um, say, 16 plots. So four by four. So that will ensure we've got enough data points uh, for both of our um, uh, trial groups. So that being the treatment um, and the pretty much non-treatment, which is our control. So our control is nothing being applied. That will allow us to compare um, the, the product's effect to the plant to no effect. And so if the no effect is here and the effect with the um, the treatment is up here, we can go, oh, okay, there's, you know, there's a difference. So that's why we have a control. So we've got our control, which is, uh, we go treatment and control. Well, these, these are our two, two uh, groups, treatment and control. Back to replication. We want to repeat that as many times as possible. So we've got 16 grids, which, mean we're, uh, which means we're going to have uh, eight uh, replicates of each. Now we want to pretty much assign each um, treatment to one of these squares. That's where randomization comes into it because we 
don't want to just pick one because we might have biases. We might go, all right, well, let's go. All of this side is tri uh, the treated um, seed, and all of this side is controlled. But what what can happen there? Say we've got all trees along this side, um, and the sun moves that way. We're going to get a lot more shade on this side and less shade here. So um, is that like is is that will that throw in um, an additional effect that we that we didn't know? Um, also, even underneath the the soil. There might be a clay um, can coming out, covering half of this side. And so if we allocate either one group to this side, one group to that side, we're going to have uh, results that don't truly show what was the real effect. And so for this example, the best way to do this is probably to get um, eight right um, control and uh, treatment on... Uh, 16 pieces of paper, so eight of each, put it into a hat and draw them out. And say, so, so we've got our, our hat and we draw out, you know, control and then treatment and then treatment, and then control. And we're gonna keep doing that, keep drawing them out of the hat until it's all filled up. And so this will make sure that it's all random. We're not putting any of our biases, uh, biases to, um, towards it. There was actually uh, a case in one of our classes where they're doing an experiment with chickens and the students were told to go go get you know eight chickens for one group and then eight for another and so they they went and got eight uh and then put them all into the first group and then they got another eight and put into the second group but what happened was that the first eight was actually the easiest to catch and so they caught all these chickens um to give them some feed and then they had a control no feed uh a standard feed um but all these lazy chickens put on less weight because they were either sick or you know, they were just slow to begin with. And so the experiment from the start was flawed because they got all these um, you know, bad chickens in one group and then all these good chickens in the other group. So that's the kind of thing we want to make sure we're avoiding and we're going to be doing that by randomization. And so a better way for that example with the chickens is if they just got 16 chickens all up and then um, numbered them all, and then randomly picked them out out of a hat as well. So that would have randomly allocated the chickens to each group. And that's what we're doing here. So we got, so we have randomization, tick. We're gonna make sure that nothing's biased and that any you know, bias is gonna be applied equally to all the groups. We've got replication, that's good. We've got uh, eight data points each. We've got a control, which is uh, no treatment being applied. Lastly, we've got standardization of uh, conditions. Now this is making sure that everything else is constant uh, in the experiment and we're only testing the effect of the treatment. So these, this can uh, include um, you know, soil type. So we're, we don't really have to think about it in this example too much because it's just one paddock. But if we had two paddocks, well, um, if we only, if, if we had two paddocks, and we did treatment on one and control on the other, well, that might have two different soil types. And so that, that itself will have an effect on the, on the um, outcome. It could also be irrigation. What if we had uh, only irrigated this side, but not the other side? That would have an effect. Um, or we fertilize one side more than the other, that will have an effect. And so we wanna get rid of as many things that will have its own effect. Um, on the uh, experiment and making sure that everything we do to one square or a couple of squares is done to everything. And so that way we'll ensure that we're only testing the effect of the treatment uh, on the seed compared to the control. So in summary, we wanna make sure we got uh, lots of trials going at the same time. We wanna make sure we randomly allocate each treatment uh, to each uh, area. Uh, we can do that out of a hat. Um, we want to make sure that we have a, a control to compare our treatment to. And we lastly, we want to make sure that we're treating all the trials equally, making sure that there's, no, um, there's nothing affecting the results other than uh, the treatment. So why is this actually important? Or why do we need to consider all this to make sure we've got a good experiment? And it comes down to 
getting results that are as close to the real results as possible. So when we think, when you think about it, we're going to have the real results, which are if, if everything run perfectly and there was no error, that's what we're going to get. But because we're outside and because of all these random things going on, we're going to get these errors. And so it's all about minimizing those errors as much as you can to get your results as close to the real result it results um, as possible. And so generally we can talk about this in two ways. That is um, reliability and accuracy. So accuracy, reliability. Now um, I learned this with a uh, diagram of a uh, target. So say that's the bullseye, that's our true, that is the true results. That's, that's what we want to get. Um, but say the results from this experiment made us, you know, hit the target up here. So our accuracy is how far away we are from the bullseye. Um, whereas our reliability is how tight our grouping is. So we can be highly uh, we can be highly uh, reliable, but be extraordinarily inaccurate. We could hit the target all the way up here, but if we're hitting the same point every every single time, we're going to be reliable. Whereas if we're um, shooting around the bullseye, but it, the grouping's quite you know, spread out, we're not going to be very reliable. So you want both. We we want to be able to repeat the experiment every time and get very similar results. But we also want results that are spot on uh, the bullseye. Generally, replication affects the uh, reliability. Um, the more replicates we have, and what we can do is make an average, so we get the um, the average of those. We're going to be throw, like getting rid of the errors. That's going to increase our reliability, and also making sure that everything in our experiment is kept the same. So standardization is also going to affect reliability because if we started applying fertilizer to just these squares I think these results are going to be if we're talking about uh, biomass production these results are going to be much greater than these results so we're going to get results all the way up here and then results all the way down here they're not similar so it's going to be um, unreliable so randomization is going to affect the accuracy um, so in this example, we want to know the real difference between uh, the yields of our treated and our uh, control. If we have the control on a high fertility, like an area of high fertil uh, fertility, and the treated on an area of low fertility, we're, we're getting skewed results. These results actually might be really uh, reliable, but they're not going to be accurate to the real results. So that's why we want to make it uh, as random as possible, so that variation is uh, spread across all our trials. So there we go, that is experimental design and the four things we need uh, when making a design. We need randomization to make sure that uh, there's no bias in our uh, selection process. Replication, making sure we've got uh, heaps of data points to use um, and then we can average them out to reduce random errors. Uh, our control which allows us to compare uh, the act our actual results or the, the effect on um, almost the baseline effect and standardization of variables to prevent external things affecting our results that we don't want. We've got to make sure we have all of these uh, in our uh, experiments, making sure that we get both accurate and reliable results. Awesome, well, thank you very much for watching. If you do have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments and I'll uh, answer them. My name is Till Simmons. Uh, and this is Uncrawled to Explain. Thanks.